to the Addiction Connection podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm your host, Mark Shaw, and I'm joined by Executive Director Jim Quigley of Freedom Farm Ministries. I tell you, I say joined by, it's maybe joined with. I'm prepositionally challenged. I don't know if you know that, Jim. Um, but Jim is live in the studio. You don't have to comment on that, but I, <laughs> I, uh, I have a disease of prepositional challengement. Is that a disease? I think uh, it is. Yeah. I think so. Let's just yeah. let's, just let's get the it. DSM out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's going to be in the DSM six, the new version, probably. Um, <laughs> well, today's podcast, the the focus will be on uh, human wisdom versus spirit wisdom. Here's our our lead in verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 says, and we impart this, and this it's talking about is, is talking about uh, the things freely given by God, the hope of the gospel, uh, biblical truth. It says, we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. And it goes on to say the natural person doesn't accept the, the things of the Spirit of God for they are folly to him and he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So our talk today will be on human wisdom words versus spirit wisdom words and even some phrases uh, that are percolating in the drug education world mm-hmm. So Jim, being in that that world of uh, rehabilitation and treatment, if you will, you're you're in that, but from a Christian biblical perspective, love what Freedom Farm Ministries is doing, and encourage you if you're listening to support them financially, support them with prayer, support them in any way you can, because they're really doing a good work, both at Freedom Farm. Um, well, Freedom Farm's the umbrella organization, but with the men that they serve there and the women in Carrie's home. So uh, so I want to encourage our listeners to support them and help them. But here's what we're going to talk about. So this was on an actual, it was an actual tweet that I think my wife sent me. And um, the, the big rage right now is all about stigma mm. and how people are being stigmatized, Jim, they're being stigmatized by these human wisdom words that they created, that they invented. They're being stigmatized by these words. And so they're trying to now redefine or, or even come up with a different language or different ways to say really the same thing they said before, but to say it in a nicer way, a less stigmatizing way, Jim, mm-hmm. because you and I— are stigmatizing people, but we're really not because we don't embrace either sets of these terms that we're going to talk about. We embrace biblical terms. And here's the deal about biblical terms. The Bible stigmatizes all of us and yeah. tells us all, all we're sinners mm-hmm. in need of uh, his saving grace. So I like biblical language because it does bring conviction. The labels there of drunkard, idolater, um, whatever sinner you are, we're, we're all sinners. We're all stigmatized. By sin, we all need the same Savior to, to fix that. But then Christ gives us a new identity. Mm. And we don't have to run around and say, I'm Mark, I'm an alcoholic, I'm Jim, I'm a drug addict. I'm, that's not our identity. That's not who we are. We can now say, I'm a redeemed sinner. I'm redeemed by Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm looking every day more and more like Christ by God's grace. And, uh, and so the stigma goes away. When you're born again, mm. but if you continue in your sin, biblically, you're going to be known by that label. That that's when the Bible labels people's when they are stuck and mired in their sin, and we know the way out is through the hope of the gospel. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you in studio. Good to be here. Now let's talk about these phrases. Sure. So they say that the phrase "she is an addict." All right? She is an addict. That is too stigmatizing. You cannot say someone is an addict. Instead, they recommend that you try this phrase. She is addicted to alcohol. 
she is in recovery from drug addiction. Use those phrases instead of saying she is an addict, say that she is addicted to alcohol. Mm. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, first, it's, it's um, you know, what is the motivation for, for doing this? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. there, you, you've said it, like, we don't want people stigmatized. But why do you not want people stigmatized? There's a reason why you don't want people stigmatized. Because you think that you will, you know, people that are talking like this, they think that the stigmatism is a contributing factor to something, right? And if we take away that contributing factor, they're going to get some kind of result. You know, that's the whole point of trying to correct our language here, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't say she's an addict. Say Mm -hmm. she is addicted to alcohol or she is in recovery from addiction, right? Right. Um, So why, why change... Why change the language? You and I both first have um, an issue, you know. I mean, look, I've identified my, uh, myself. I still will say that I, you know, came from a, a, a addiction background. I was an a, I was an addict. You know, I'll, I'll say that stuff because it was just when you lived it for as long as, you know, people like we did, you know, it just kind of becomes second language. But yeah, people around you, you know, understand that mm-hmm. I know who I am in Christ and, uh I understand, you understand what I meant by, you know, um, I could just generically say that, uh, that, that, that I was a sinner, right? I I was a drunkard. I could say that, um, but it's not, it's not, I'm still learning how to use that language myself, you know, (laughs) but for the most part, when most people say you're an addict, there, there, you, you, this is like one of those points where you have to like, let's define terms here. Like, what do you mean by you're an addict, right? Because um, if you and I go to a popular, you know, popular meeting places where people identify as an addict, they're defining that uh, very differently than you and I both are, right? Right. So, I so you have to kind of assume already this person that is saying that she is an addict, they are defining it a certain way, and I would. I would bet my money, all, all, all my <laughs> millions of dollars that I have, um, that what they mean is that they're coming from a disease model uh, understanding of addiction, right? So yes. the d- disease model, ultimately, um, the, the, the bio, there's biological, um, there's biological um, factors that are causative in addiction. Um, so... I don't want to, you know, lose anybody, but, you know, um, in, in our podcast, but, you know, um, Mark and I, and anybody that's listening to this, that's a Christian believes that we are flesh and spirit, right? Um, that's Mm -hmm. how God made us. And, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, a, a spiritual side that is, um, uh, is, is the causative portion of addiction and uh, that is my heart and my desires. Uh, 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 that is what is causative, which will produce biological um, uh, influences on our, in our on our addiction. Is that is that sounding all right to you? The way I'm saying it. So basically, what it means is that my desires, my heart, has led me to um, uh, the the substance abuse. Right, my choices have done that, but. Throughout that process, my body has been influenced by the biological changes that have happened, right? But those are influences, uh, not causes for my behavior, right? So I can't blame my behavior on those biological changes that have happened because of my addiction. Yes. Right? Um, but the the reverse is true in this world that we're talking about because they do not identify human beings as flesh and spirit, right? Mm-hmm. They are flesh only. So mm-hmm. all, co- all the, all the, um, uh, the issues are biologically um, uh, caused, right? Yeah. So this person that they're calling an addict, it's really not their fault they're an addict. They're an addict because of biology, right? right. And it, that's causative in that, in that sense, so we don't want to stigmatize them any more than they are having to 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 face this. I mean, it's almost like um it's almost to them like uh uh if you were to 
let's say somebody was born with a handicap, right? Maybe born with a disfigured hand. You wouldn't want to call that person, hey, disfigured hand, you know? That's the rate. That's the reason. This is what they believe, right? Right. They believe that this person is an addict at almost no fault of their own. Yeah. Right. They were born that way. Um, they were biologically made that way. You know, genetic, whatever you want to do. I mean, they. How many different theories are there nowadays? There's there there used to be the chemical imbalance. You know, mm -hmm. now then it's uh um then it's your neural pathways and transmitters and. Um, you know, there, there was, there was the, the genetic predisposition for a while. I mean, they, it's changing all the time. So I don't know where they're at right now. I'm pretty sure it's the neuro neurology behind it all. That's what they're, they're pointing to is the cause. Yeah. But you know, it's like somebody born with a disfigured hand, you know, That's to make a, a pretty easy, you know, example of, you, you know, you wouldn't say, Hey, look, here comes this disfigured hand person. Right. right? So right. they don't want you saying She's an addict because that's basically in their world. That's what you're doing to them. That's right. Because you're associating their whole life with this thing that they have. That's really no fault of their own. Right. So it's better to lighten the load. You don't want to stigmatize them to say that they are addicted to alcohol. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're in this position where, I mean, have you ever seen somebody who's addicted to alcohol? I mean, I've been addicted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me tell you something. When people people that love you are right there when you're going through it, it is a, it, they feel completely sorry for you. Yeah. Trust me. Nobody's sitting there going, yes, yeah, go, nobody's going, <laughs> you and your dumb choices, man. Right, you know? right. <laughs> you and your sinful heart. I mean, they're, they're looking at you going, Oh my gosh, we have to call the hospital. Right. We have to get we have to call EMS for this guy. I mean, my family's literally had to do that for me. I mean, it's a really scary thing to be around somebody that's physically dependent on and addicted to a substance, you know? Yeah. And you you your heart breaks for them. And it's I mean, you couldn't do this type of uh I mean, I couldn't do this type of work if I didn't have compassion on people that that were, you know, addicted to it, but you know, what are we looking at as far as how to help them and, um, and whatnot? This is not helpful in my opinion. This yeah. is not helpful at all because, um, the last thing you need to do with somebody, uh, that has, that is at the, the, the cent, we are the center of our problem here. And when it comes to addiction, right. Um, you know, unlike the person that's been born with a dis disfigured hand, right. They were born born that way. Somebody that that is is uh, is struggling with addiction, they yes, they may have some physical, biological things that have happened to them, but ultimately, those are not the cause of their addiction. The addiction is their hearts, right? It's the the spiritual side that needs to be addressed. It's it's them. They are at the center of it, and um um we 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 can't get off of that center by trying to direct attention elsewhere. That's the worst thing you can do for somebody that has an issue like this. So, but I understand, I understand what they're doing. Yeah. And it's ultimately because they do not believe um, that this, they, they believe ultimately that human beings are, are, are good people that, that desire to self-correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what this world believes. They believe that everybody deep down in their hearts really doesn't want to live um, lives, self-centered lives that 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 um, that um, that they that please themselves. They they really want to be quote unquote good people, right? That's what right. That's what this world thinks. So, given an opportunity to self-correct, they will. So. Mm -hmm. So this is this is trying to guide people down a pathway of self correction by self help. By, yeah. <laughs> self correction. I love it. Yeah. I love it cuz we're so powerful we can self correct and self help ourselves, right? Well, you're being very sarcastic, but <laughs> I know you don't love it cuz it's very damaging. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. It's unfortunate oh, because this is You get me fired up. You're right. It's it's really I mean when you when you work in in a, a Christian addiction, um, you know people don't realize the the difficulty. Now look, I don't want to 
limit the power of God to just grab a hold and change someone's heart from the inside out. But it's it's also very true that when you're working with somebody that's um, that's sought help in quotation marks in treatment yes. for a long time, they are they are inundated with this type of thinking. They are, and um, you know, part of my job is first, you know, identifying all those points that they're stuck at with their thinking, presenting biblical truth to them, and you know, hoping, <laughs> hoping that uh the, the 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 holy spirit grabs a hold of their heart and mind and teaches them uh, that passage you're reading in corinthians you know teaches them the spiritual truth that uh that, that the natural man this just does not accept you know right this is natural man thinking um what That's we're talking good. about you know? yep it is and you're you're hitting on all the points what i appreciate about you jim is you explain it and, and just explained it and help people to see how they're thinking, mm -hmm. how the, what how they think about it, because they're really trying to be as compassionate as they can be yeah. in that wrong system. Yeah, because they're in a they're in a system that believes self help works, and people are trying to self correct. I, I love the way you put that, and yet because they're in the wrong system and they're thinking with wrong premises, they're going to lead people the wrong direction, and they're going to continue to need help. And that's why we see over 80,000 drug overdose deaths uh, since May of 2020. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's the number. Over 80,000 people have died, uh, and, and people aren't seeking help. They're not uh, looking for help until they get desperate, until they, they see a need for it. And our message is different than the 93% of the programs that are out there, and even some of the Christian programs like teach a victim mentality. We've been oh, talking about yeah. that. It's sickening what Christian programs are doing. That's why the Addiction Connection Network is fairly small because we know that these programs are teaching a message that's radically different than what the world teaches and even what some Christian places teach. And it's, it's you know, it's a tough situation because, you know, you and I are, are friends. We think alike. Mm -hmm. we, we are bothered by the same things, but we both need to be very careful, um, you know, when we're operating around those circles because we, we, <laughs> yeah. we feel like we want to uh, draw battle lines and, and go to war with enemies, right? And there's a sense where we can understand that world as being used by the enemy, right? Yeah. But, man, if there's one thing that I've learned at uh, the MAC program at RTS, and I've told you this personally, yeah, is that I just really can't legitimately hold on to, to attaching those types of motives to that world. Because if you ever sit down and talk to somebody that's, you know, that's, that's working in a secular uh, rehab industry or even, you know, you know, people that are what we what we call integrationists their motivation is not to harm no and their their motivation is to help they they really truly believe they're trying to help yeah and the the people from the biblical counseling world um you know I'm speaking to myself here we mm -hmm. need to be very very careful not to attach you know, nefarious motives to that world. That's right. Because we will lose our witness. And how many times have people from the biblical counseling world, because they're so, you know, yeah. riled up of, of, of drawing those battle lines, have misrepresented the biblical world? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, we're, we have our own issues that we've had to deal with. Um, I right. mean, I'm new to the whole Biblical counseling world, really. Um, <laughs> Welcome. And, and, uh, and, you know, to tell you the truth, I mean, it's... The things you hear about it, the things they say about us, yeah. it, it, it bothers me because yeah. I know it's not true. Right. I don't want to do that to them. Exactly. That's what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we are not take two verses and call me in the morning. No. <laughs> let, me, let me scream at you about your sin all day because you need yeah. to hear some tough truth. Which is what a lot of people from that world think that we do. It is, yeah. And it's not what we do at all. That's right. Yep. Um, but there have been people that do that, right? Yep. <laughs> um, because they were so frustrated at the other world um, that, you know, they they got into their own flesh. That's right. So That's right. we need to be careful. But, 
yeah, this stuff is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> After you say all that nice yeah. stuff, then you say it's garbage. But it is. It's the wrong system. It's the wrong message. It is garbage because it points people in a direction that is really away from Christ because you start blaming and going, well, my parents, you know, it's, it's my daddy was an alcoholic. My mom was an or my grandmother, my uncle, my, you know, it's in my family. And then, and then you start thinking that's where the solution's going to come from. I got to fix this genetic problem or the, my upbringing, you know, and, and that's what I appreciated. Even in the previous podcast, we talked about the causal people think that trauma caused addiction or the first use of the drug changed my physical makeup and now I'm addicted. But we know causally it's our sinful heart. It's yeah. our desires. Right. Like we're born this way. Right. And then we find something we really like and we just live idolatrously toward that, w with that thing uh, in, in that direction. So what we're saying is our message is different because we want to point people away from self-correcting or any other kind of correction. The only correction is a transformational heart change done by the Holy Spirit working in partnership with God's Word, which is why we love the Bible. We love teaching that to the people at Freedom Farm. I mean, it, it's awesome to see the light bulbs go off and people start to get it and realize who this God is. We mm. get to introduce them to Christ and to help them have a relationship with him. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, um, uh, causation. You know, you know who, who really explains um, in a secular way causation appropriately uh, when it comes to addiction well is that guy Lance Dotis. Yeah. I have that five-minute NPR <laughs> interview I play for everybody, and, he's, and, and they ask him. <laughs> they ask him in the interview because he goes and rails against what we— like, he's a secularist, and right. he's railing against everything that we're talking about. He's like uh, the I treatment love, industry and all I that. I love that five minute segment. I have it saved too. Yeah. I can get right to it. Yeah, he said, and he says, they said, well, well, how do you help? And he goes, well, look, and it's just if you don't, if you're not listening, you you may miss it. But he, they said, how do you help somebody? And he goes, well, look, this is what the issue is: when a person gets trapped, okay, mm -hmm. when they are 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 up against the wall or something they need to do something to displace themselves. They need to get out of it somehow. And simply when it comes to people with addiction, <laughs> that is their thing. That is what mm -hmm. they do. So he completely puts the onus on the person, right? So life, the, the, the influence, okay, influence, so tra trauma influence, upbringing influence, all these things are powerful influences that mm -hmm. trap a person, but they didn't cause the problem, right? Yeah. What was the cause? It, it, the cause was them reaching out and grabbing this thing in front of them in order to displace themselves. And Lance Dotus gets that right. And he does. He's a he's a secularist. And <laughs> if people if people just listen to him, right? Yeah. If people yeah. just listen to him. <laughs> because what happens is is when when you see these things as influences, yeah. like, look, you had a terrible upbringing, right? You had some massive trauma that's happened to you. You've had, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, when you see that, then you, then you know how, 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 what does the Bible give us, right, to deal with this terrible trauma? But when you're focused the other way as someone trying to pr provide help, right, you, you're, you, you're constantly thinking in your mind that, like, I could all day long, we could fix this. We I could give a biblical truth all day long about this trauma, but right. inherently, that's not the cause of their problem, right? Right. So, um, uh, so anyway, it's gonna. If you people would just, like I said, listen to Lance Totus a little bit more, <laughs> they would probably, even in a secular context, be able to help because you'd be putting putting the uh, responsibility back on the person as the one reaching out and doing this thing instead of instead of that thing being the cause for their problems. Yes, yes. All right, well, we are out of time on this podcast, but we're going to actually continue on with some of this a mumbo-jumbo in a future podcast. So, okay. All right, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining us today. Take care and God bless. God bless.